morning folks. We managed to squeeze another vlog in before the brewery tour tomorrow on the Heritage Day. It's going to be of course the first brew that we're going to do on the pilot kit that we built in around a month's time I think it was. Maybe less, I'm not sure. But it's been hectic getting to this stage. So as you can see the brewery is full of bags of malt and what have you. We've just had a delivery this morning of grains. In fact, I'll take you off the tripod. We'll go and have a walk and talk about what the plans are. So on the table, just jumping into another um, project, we've got another single phase control uh, power supply and some six millimeter square twin and earth cable. So the idea behind this is that Instead of using this supply on the wall, aww, then uh, we're going to actually go over with a cable, sling it across the roof and down so we can have the setup against the big HB wall and we can plug it all in over there, which will mean that uh, well, we can have all of this on display whilst we can also have all of this on display and I thought it would just be a little bit crowded having it down here near the actual drain area so I think if it lives up there it'll look better and uh, what I've also what I want to do is use these 60 litre buckets for fermenters and the idea is I bought these to be able to do a 40 litre batch of beer in there which of course is just enough to fill a firkin. For those of you who don't know what a firkin is, these are firkins and they are 40 litres in capacity and uh, if I can brew a test batch and uh, it's enough to fill one of those that means we can put it on the hand pull in the bar as real ale. Fail that if we want to go down the craft ale route then instead of using corny kegs, which is doable, we can use our 30 litre Sankey kegs, which we've got. These are the ones with our name stamped on the side. So that's the plan. I thought if we brought it up to this end of the, uh, the brewery, then it kind of, I'll probably rotate that 90 degrees so it's sat along the back wall there. But we can kind of have a brew day on, ongoing there while we give a little bit of, bit of a talk about the brewing process and the brewery tour so it will be a really nice holistic experience for people to come in and experience the workings of a brewery uh, within a 20 minute time frame and we'll have everything going on so I'm going to sling this cable anyway so we can get it all wired up and then uh, we'll, we'll test it for a start and then put all this grain away and then get a recipe out, which is going to be the best bitter, I think I explained on yesterday's vlog. Uh, it's going to be the best bitter, and we'll get the grain out into the kit, ready for tomorrow morning, when we'll be firing up uh, as soon as the first people arrive for the first round of tours. We're doing one at one o'clock, and we're doing one at three. Right, little chaps, that's the electric side of it done. And what I've also done is I've taken one of the uh, under-counter chillers that we use for the remote bar and I've modified it so it can be used as a remote cooler for these fermenters. Uh, but I've done it in such a way that we could still revert it back to being a remote chiller for beer if we needed to, so I haven't taken the coils out. But what I have done is I've taken the lid of this uh, fermenter here and I've drilled some 9mm holes in it in exactly the right place and I've forced these 3 8 pipes through that are part of a long cooling coil out of a remote chiller so these are the big chillers that we have in the cellar so these coils came from the remote chiller that we're using to cool the cold room and I'm not going to use them, in fact we've got 10 or 15 of these upstairs so I thought what better way to repurpose them than to install them in the lid like so and once they're pushed all the way down I can put the crossbar back on the top 
and put some connectors up there so we can connect this to the glycol and then all we do is we just dunk that in the fermenter like so and we have internal cooling for the beer of course when it comes to the brew day tomorrow I am going to have to make sure that this bucket is filled up with steriliser namely parasitic acid Persid 15 I think is what we're using at the moment and to fill this full bucket up isn't a lot so I may as well go and do that and then of course we've got uh, the whole shebang submerged in the sanitizer and that then should be good to go for fermenting beer in it so in terms of heating we don't really need it at the minute it's still about 15 16 degrees in here at the moment but we will need to uh, cool it for sure so that's the plan deliveries oh, well we'll leave them to it we'll carry on talking about fermenting so because it's warm in here uh, we're not going to need to heat at the moment but I'm aware that winter is coming up so I have a spare uh, control unit which we use for the fermenters and I've ordered the components to build another four of these which will give me three more for three more of these fermenters and again another spare I like to have a spare and all I'm going to do is hook this up to the glycol chiller that we've just converted I'll show you soon and we'll stick the probe to the side of the fermenter like that with a bit of insulation on the outside of it so it's reading the temp in the tank or the temp of the tank and then uh, we'll set the temperature on here and when this kicks in it will just open a valve one of these valves and call for um, some cold glycol but if we do need to heat at all then all I'll do is uh, wire in a Argos under quilt heating blanket and that will be enough to keep this fermenter warm in the winter months so it can finish fermenting and they're cheap like 10 quid and it will do the job and if we don't need them we'll just take it off fold it up put it in a drawer ready for next time so that's the plan there's the controller there's the fermenter there's the cooling coil all I need to do is attach some lines, put some glycol in the cooler and then we can just give it a bit of a leak test before it goes into, uh, into use tomorrow. But I've never had a John Guest fitting leak yet on these kind of systems so I'm quite happy and comfortable using it. And the way uh, I've also put the holes in the lid it's tight around there so the the hole wanted to be about 9.8 millimeters it's only nine so it's been forced in and then also you'll notice that there's kind of a ridge like just lifted up on this section here so if we do get any glycol leaks then of course it's on a high bit so instead of trying to find its way through that hole it'll just roll off into these divots on the lid and then thirdly we're using monopropylene glycol which is food grade so if there was to be any leakage which there won't then we're not going to turn anybody into a corpse if they drink the resulting uh, beer but like I said that ain't going to be an issue because we're far too smart for that right I think just a quick digression Gemma's just accepted delivery of some wonderful wonderful hops so because we've got a lot of beer to brew over the next few months uh, we've had to order some hoppage, haven't we, Jem? Where did he put it? Just there, two rooms down the top room. Oh, wow, look at this. Is that all of them? Wow. Three, six. Are they from different senders? Or is it all from Bath? It's all the same, from the same. Because I ordered some from Brew Select as well. Oh, yeah. No, I think these are just. There we go. 2017 Columbus T90s. Right. There's no more stickers on them, is there? Anyway, this was 700 quid? 700 pounds worth of hops here. Yeah, you don't get a lot of bang for your buck when it comes to hoppage. So, you can see that we're recirculating in here at the minute. 
that is the uh, caustic going round and round and there's a few more of those coils just having a little caustic bath and this is going to be our fermenter bench where we'll stock the fermenters this will live under here when we've completed the installation but all I've done is <coughs> excuse me put a an STC 1000 in line and what's that going to what that's going to do is control the temperatures in the glycol bath so it'll turn the pump on and it'll turn the cooling fan on it won't actuate the recirculation pump but the control box that we've got over there will if you get my drift what an absolute radical day we've had today we've got everything done as I wanted and we've still got 10 minutes to spare before we go home Gemma's just doing the bottom of the tanks these were full of beer from casking the other day this is the rinse water from the boil kettle and it's just about to empty so we've rinsed that we're transferring all the caustic out of the HLT it's 40 litres of it and we're putting it into FV1 and we're going to use that to clean these three fermenters over the next day or so I might leave it till Monday but the caustic's in there anyway at least we're not wasting it because it's not really had much to do has it some brand new pots to clean we know there wasn't a lot to clean so that caustic is basically brand spanking new I'm going to fill the HLT up and I'm going to set the timer on here to come on at 8 o'clock in the morning so when I arrive the HLT should be sat at 80 degrees I am putting faith in the system because I won't be able to check it if we have any faults so the proof of the pudding will be tomorrow morning when we walk through the door there'll either be no door or the HLT will be at temperature and will be cooking we've just got a couple of bits to put up on the mezzanine and tidy this little section here but as you can see the brewer is looking spot on oh and yes we managed to figure out how we're going to cool the fermenters so oh. well there's your dead space in the SS Brewtech boil kettle with the double tip brew stand basically nothing folks so let's turn that off so yeah back to the fermenters so I've got a maxi cooler Maxi 310 and we're using the recirc part I mean you can see the condensation on that already it's set to 5 degrees which is good and then all I'm going to do is just screw this to the top oh we've got some condensation here that needs insulating we're just going to screw uh, the valves to the top of these control boxes and just sit them up on the top like this somewhere maybe like that that looks fine and then inside that you can see the coil and in there this thing is freezing it is freezing cold so that will no doubt keep the temperature of the beer where we want it without batting an eyelid so what I thought I might do instead is I might tap in to these lines here and just put an ISO valve on there and we can run these cooling lines off of that and then we can plug the control box into these fermenters because they're expandable so all we have to do is just plug it into here and then hey presto this where's the plug socket there we are you see then that will operate off the main cooler which is around the corner so we can do away with that maxi 310 see the main cooler being down here and then of course if at any point this breaks down we can just plug the maxi 310s in as backup always thinking of contingencies right that sounds to me like the HLT's empty 
Yeah. Oh, there's a little bit of rubbish in there. Look down there as well, look. Is that a little rust spot? That could be a little spot of rust, which we shouldn't be getting. But it is the finest Chineseium, I suppose. You know what, that might actually just be a spark from where we cut the hole out. So not something I'm worried about. Even if it is a rust spot, I can passivate it. So there we go. I'm just gonna rinse the HLT out now so it's got no caustic in there. And uh, we'll be ready to fill it up with water and get set for tomorrow's brew day. I'm not sure how much of a video we're gonna to make tomorrow, if any at all, I'm not promising anything. I'm gonna have enough on my plate, I think, by doing two brewery tours in one day and the first batch on the pilot kit. I know, I can't believe I'm risking it, to be honest, but if anything goes wrong, we just shut the pilot kit down and do the brewery tours. No bother. Anyway, folks, I'm wrapping this one up. I'm gonna go home. Might even treat myself to a cheeky vacant gesture on the way. And, uh, well, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.